Welcome back to another edition of Force Friday, where we talk about Star Wars theories, characters, concepts, comparisons, analyzations, collectibles, and more. And today we're going to continue with our wish list series covering what is most people's favorite film of the Star Wars saga, The Empire Strikes Back. It may not be your favorite. It happens to be mine. But one thing to clarify straight away is that when we say Black Series, we're really just talking about the 112 scale in general. I'd be happy with a Figuarts version or perhaps if Mayfex dips their toe back into the game or Bandai model kit. In some cases, I'm not sure for any on the list today, but you kind of get the idea. Now, this happens to be my favorite Star Wars film. It's an important one because it's the one that defines what the world is that Star Wars takes place in. Movies kind of only get one chance to do that, and you either do it right, like this, or Terminator 2, or Aliens, or you get it wrong, like The Matrix. That's neither here nor there. Another thing I noticed when doing this list was that most of the core characters have kind of been covered in one way or another, and in fact, I had to reach pretty deep into the well for some of the others. Now, that doesn't mean that all of them have been done. There's going to be a few on here, and there's a few that I've left for the next go-round. But it does mean that in many ways, most have been covered, and this movie is pretty well accounted for, much like Solo. But nonetheless, we will continue with our list. We'll check back in a year or so and see what needs updating and go from there. So we're going to start with number 10, which is Luke Hand Recovery. I'm not sure what his technical name is for that outfit design, but the design that he's wearing when he's on the medical frigate, which is a weird word to say, but whatever. Almost sounds like it should be a curse word. Like, I don't give a frigate what you're talking about. But that's neither here nor there either. The truth is, I don't really need this representation of Luke. However, I feel like every Star Wars way that covers the original trilogy, you're either gonna get a Luke or a Vader, and I feel like I'm swimming in both of them. But at least this Luke looks drastically different than what another Vader would look like. And we just got a 40th anniversary Empire Vader, so I need a break. And I know we got Luke's also, but we haven't got Luke in this particular costume design, so at least it would be something new and original. And I'm not sure that the three and three quarter line has covered this Luke either, which is bizarre in many ways to me. But it would give you the opportunity to start building this scene, and I think that would be of worth and value. Number nine, Torin Far. Now, I may get some of these names wrong. That's the way it goes sometimes. It's also the way Love Goes by Janet Jackson, which is a tremendous record, but it's also neither here nor there. I'm in a weird mood today. You gotta forgive me. However, with the recent release of The Rebel Soldier that I think we covered yesterday... I really want to start fleshing out my Hoth display. And in order to do so, I'm definitely going to need the characters that really stood out visually. And this one definitely stands out, partially because she's female, partially because she looks like Leia a little bit. I remember when I was a kid, I used to think it was Leia's sister. But whatever the reason, there was something about her that jumped off the screen to me as this is a character that is of some importance and I should probably take notice. We were lucky enough to finally get her in the three and three quarter Black Series line. And I think it would be only fitting to kind of follow that through in the Star Wars Black Series six inch line. Also aiding and rounding out some of the background Hoth characters. Speaking of background characters and an opportunity for Hasbro to make a quick buck by people that won't be able to stand the concept of having just one, Bespin Security comes in at number eight. I think this would be an easy money grab for Hasbro. Most people are gonna want multiples. They could do a similar thing with the face options and stuff that they did for the Rebel Soldier on Hoth and provide a couple different options with each one, giving the consumer even more of an incentive to purchase larger amounts of figures. I think that Hoth figure is even being sent out in a case. Like, I think you can get a case of them. It just shows that there is a market desire for troop building a lot of these non-stormtrooper slash clone trooper type characters. The three and three quarter line was aware of this and offered them in different races and everything else. And it really helped when putting a shelf together of three and three quarter figures to have some diversity and unique visual components to a shelf a lot of characters are going to look the same. You know, sometimes I do that with my stormtroopers. I'll give one the long rifle and one the, just to break it up a little bit, just to have it look a little different. And I feel like it's important for these as well. And while we're on Bespin and on the topic of troop building, let's go ahead and get a cloud car pilot as well. I put this one higher than the security. I'm not sure it deserves to be, but I just like the visual design better. It's also a figure that I think most people would want at least two of and a figure that could help flesh out or round out a shelf of cast of characters. I always thought they had a cool design. It was kind 
kind of a take on the imperial kind of dome helmet design, but looked a little cooler, you know, but it seemed cut of that same cloth. The same for the Rebel Troopers and A New Hope. Seemed like it would be a different take on kind of a standard that was used in that universe. So I thought they were visually cool. I think they would break up a shelf well against all that blue and white with those flashes of red in their costume. And it would be another troop building option, giving Hasbro a better incentive of more bang for their buck. Now let's get off Bespin for a minute. And as a matter of fact, let's get off good guys in general, so to speak. I actually think they've done a pretty good job of providing Imperial officers and getting Veers was a nice touch because you could add that different costume component, which allowed for a completely different look amongst the Imperial officers. But if there's one officer I need, it's Admiral Ozzel. And if for no other reason that Darth Vader says one of the slickest lines, I think in the entire saga to him, when he says he's as clumsy as he is stupid. I say it all the time at home and amongst my peers. Usually when we're trashing somebody, I'm like, oh, guys, as clumsy as he is stupid. But it's just a hard line. Being as though he was an older officer, I think he will also add a little bit of unique spice to an Imperial shelf where he won't blend in with sort of the rest of the kind of 30 to 40, six foot tall, brown haired white guys. Now you can get one that at least has gray hair and a mustache. So it just gives the shelf a little bit of spice where people walk by and they don't think you just bought one figure eight times. They actually see that they're different molds, which to me is always nice. Always makes the shelf seem a little bit fuller and a little bit more alive, a little bit more organic, I guess. Moving on to number five at our halfway point, Will Row Hood. I feel like you gotta have him. He's just become like a standard. There's like the run of the Will Rose, the celebration that I've seen now. He's the guy that's commonly referred to as the ice cream maker. He even got a three and three quarter figure and he's like running in the background when they're told to evacuate by carrying an ice cream maker. I know we'll probably never get this figure. However, I could see it being a fan choice thing or something. But in light of the fan choice that was just Commander Cody, I'm not so sure I have any faith in the fan choice anyway. But once again, I think that what really brings a lot of these shelves to life is the background characters. It's the characters you don't know that are just part of the world that give the whole scene a look that there's an independent life happening on this shelf. And you might not know everybody, but they all live there and they're all happy, or at least some of them are. Will Rose running, of course. And he'd have to come with his ice cream maker, right? But I think this is a character that needs to be made mainly because of his connection to the fandom, not because of his role on the films. But he's become a staple. He's like part of the DNA of Star Wars now. He's one of those characters where if you drop that name at a table and somebody knows what it is, you already know where their level of fandom is. You know what I mean? It's one of those things. So for that, I think he's earned it. My number four choice, I would prefer to be a two-pack, which is everybody's favorite little ugly piggies, the Ugnots. Once again, background characters, but characters that are definitely iconic, characters that become important to any carbon freezing display. And because, for instance, not all of them are the same size or the same kind of complexion, there's like variants in there. You could have yet another opportunity to troop build something that was unique, that wasn't, like we talked about before, cookie cutter clones, literally, or stormtroopers, which you know I love, but I also like the idea of troop building something that looks a little more unique. And Empire, as we've seen in this video, provides a lot of those options. But yeah, definitely want a set of Ugnots, and maybe you could repurpose one of the heads later on with some slight retooling. But we'll get there in a few videos. My number three, General Riken, or Riken, I'm not exactly sure what his name is but once again kind of goes hand in hand with torn far except he's far more recognizable has speaking lines etc etc plays a part in the plot of the film and offers an element of leadership for your rebels and simultaneously helps fill out your hoth shelf which is probably overflowing with troopers now and options and so on and so forth so i think just building around those figures plus we got a dac coming just building around those figures is just gonna become more and more important as time goes on and i think that he is probably one of the bigger standards of of that infantry and definitely one of the most recognizable. And that moves us into our number two choice, which I can't believe hasn't been done, is long overdue. Everybody's favorite brainless cyborg, I'm assuming anyway, Lobot, another fan favorite, a guy that looks like he belongs in the Star Trek universe far more than he does in the Star Wars universe, but has become a beloved and iconic character within this film. And him and Lando to me is like, I know they don't have as much of a screen time together as some of the other characters, but they're, I'll tell you, it's, it's like Chewbacca and Han to me. Like, I just feel like they go together. Having one without the other just seems pointless in a way. Once again, he has plot components to the film. He plays a role in the outcome. He affects the course of the film. He's one of those kind of background characters that many know by name. So it puts him in an upper echelon of Star Wars background characters. I just think there's every reason in the world to make this guy. And I'm surprised.
guys that we haven't seen him yet. Plus, he was in the original three and three quarter line. Like, he's just been around the block a few times. Do you know what I mean? And are we all on page that he probably had his brain removed? Like, lobot like lobotomy? Is that? I'm not digging there, am I? And that's why he's got that thing around his head? Oh, well. And then my number one choice should probably come to no one as any surprise. All of these cases have to come with big characters, whether it be Han or Chewie or Luke or Vader. And my choice for this film is certainly, without a doubt, 100% Leia in the kind of Bespin gown. I never really realized how much this look meant to me until I acquired the Hot Toys, but ever since I've acquired the Hot Toys, it has become painfully obvious of how important and iconic that look is, how beautiful she looks in it. And as we've kind of talked about with a lot of the characters in this lineup, Getting a lot of these characters would allow for a Bespin display that would really be of visual value. It's just a lot of bright colors in a very dirty, dingy universe. Bespin is like the one area that's like pristine. So white backgrounds, white steps, blue skies or red skies and orange skies, orange helmets, red dresses, blue capes. Like it would just be a very vibrant shelf to build. It would be something that I would be very much interested in. And I think something that would be super rewarding. So that's my top 10 for Empire. The next time we revisit the Wishlist series, we'll cover Return of the Jedi. And until then, hope you guys are staying safe. Hope you guys are staying sane. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Until next time, take care.